Let's try to answer a few questions related to the quantum numbers. Okay, so what is the designation of a subshell with n equals 5 and L equal to 1? So if n equals 5, that's the energy level, right? Energy level 5, and L is 1. So if L is 0, it's an s orbital. If L is 1, it's a p orbital. So I can say this designation is just a 5p. And how many orbitals are in this subshell? Well, what do we know about? That's really asking, like, what are the ml? How many mls do I have here? And then, and, and then in part C, indicate the ml values for each one of these. So if L, let's do C first. If L is 1, ml could be negative 1, 0, or 1. That means I have three. So I have three orbitals. That, again, those are three different orientations. I can have one in this direction, one in this direction, and then, oh, I'm not good at drawing these, <laughs> one in and out. So again, think about your three axes. You have oh, one on each axis. One, two, three. Um, so I have three orbitals. That, M, that ML tells you about the orientation in space. And these are the ML values. Let's look at another one that's kind of common, and there's one of these on the homework. Um, circle each of the following that represent an acceptable set of quantum numbers. Okay, so some of these are not going to be acceptable. So there's some rules, right? So what do we know about n? n, the only rule is it can't be 0. So n has to be 1 or greater. So it starts at 1 and can go on. L is related to n. So L, uh, L can be 0 all the way up to n minus 1. So if you ever find an n and an L that have the same number, that cannot be an acceptable set of quantum numbers. And then the rules about ML, ML uh, can range from negative L through 0 all the way up to positive L. So let's start with the first one. So N is 3. So if N is 3, right, so if N is 3, L could be what? L could be 0, 1, or 2. So L, 2, that's fine. So if L is 2, ML can be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, or 2. So it's fine. So this is an acceptable set of quantum numbers because it follows all the rules. So yes, that one's fine. Now, let's look at the next one. n is 1. If n is 1, l can be 0. So this one doesn't work because l can only be 0. Does that kind of make sense? Um, if n is 3, what could l be? l could be, just like we did in the first one, l could be one, 0, 1, or 2, because it has to range all the way up to n minus 1, so this is fine. And if l is 2, ml can be negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, or 2, right? So it's 1 in this case. So this is also fine. Very similar to that first one. Uh, the next one, n is 0. No, n can't be 0. n can never be 0. So this is not an acceptable set of quantum numbers. Remember what the quantum numbers are doing? They're trying to describe where the electron lives. So they're describing the orbital. n tells you about the energy level. Energy level starts at 1, so it can't be energy level 0. L tells you about uh, the shape. Do I have an S, P, D orbital? What do I have? It depends on what energy level I'm in. So L depends on N. It's going to go from 0 all the way up to N minus 1. And then the ML, the number of orientations I have, depends on what kind of orbital I have, what the shape is. So ML depends on L. So they always depend on each other. So you have to kind of start at the beginning and work your way up. So let's, let's check for this one. Um, if, M, if N is 3, L can be 0, 1, or 2. Good, so it's one, that's fine. Now if M, if L is one, ML can be negative one, zero, or one, it cannot be negative two. Even if, even if N is three, ML could be, uh, could be negative two, but not if L is one. <laughs> so you have to look at both of these. So look at N to decide if L is okay, look at L to decide if M is okay. So this one doesn't work. Um, the last one, right, if n is 3, l can be 0, 1, or 2, so that's okay. And then if m, if uh, l is 2, ml could be negative 2, negative 1, or 0, and it's 0, so this one's also fine. Um, so that's just playing around with some of these quantum numbers, be able to do a problem like that. So what do these uh, orbitals really look like? So we kind of looked at these, we took a sneak peek, you have s orbitals, and to go from 1s to 2s to 3s, it's just getting bigger. It's getting bigger, but it also has these areas that have zero probability. It's called a node, uh, means zero probability of finding an electron. This kind of looks like a jawbreaker candy, where um, you can see those inner shells there. It's just, it's, it's a mathematical thing. Um, there's no, there's zero probability of finding an electron there. This has to do with wave functions, which we don't have to worry about too much, but 
basically if you're um, in a 1s orbital you don't have any nodes if you're in a 2s orbital you have one node if you're 3s then you have two nodes you have certain the bigger um, higher energy levels you get to the uh, the more nodes you have here p orbitals look like this um, peanut right? it's a peanut shape the dumbbell you have three different orientations s orbital you only have one right there's no it's fixed in the, in the center it's only one orientation um, for p orbitals they can be on each one of the axes um, and then you have zero probability of finding an electron right here in the middle. So it's going to be here or here, but not in the middle. Uh, d orbital, you have um, you have five different d orbitals, and they're they're all different shapes as well. So those are your orbitals.